areas where we're going to get a bunch of stuff. But before we get there, I want to skip over to this one, which is settings. So it's important to set it the way it needs to be, because if not, this is what totally will change the way the rendering looks. So if you just leave it by default, it usually looks pretty good, but you have like zero control over what ends up happening. So um, it's good to at least have some sort of way that you know what you're getting out of it is what you wanted. So if we go to settings, it will open up and you have a ton of different things here. So here's my Enscape window. Here's my settings. So the first thing is um, the mode right here, rendering style. This little slider, if you look here, you can you can make it show you like edges like you would in SketchUp. So if you crank it up, it doesn't really show every single line, um, but it does show like profile lines and main kind of like edges. If it wouldn't have shown in SketchUp as possibly like a profile, it, and it's just like line work, it won't show up in Enscape. So for example, here, see that little line that we have right here? That one's never going to show up right here because it's not on the edge. It's always going to be just along that face. So if you look there, you can't really see anything. Um, if I were to just draw like a line here, it's not going to show up in Enscape. That would be like right there. Um, but if you draw like an actual shape and then give it height, then those lines do show up because those bound this shape. So that's just something to remember. So where that really plays effect is in reveals like this. If you don't, if you wanted that reveal to show, you would have actually had to model it the way we did. So let me move this over here. So here where I have, let me turn that off. Well, no, I guess that makes sense to keep it on. See here, this is like just a line on the face. And then this one's actually modeled as a reveal. So the reveal one will show up in Enscape and actually get that line on it. The line just, just on a flat face is completely invisible. So sometimes we model stuff in SketchUp that looks really good and you get it into Enscape and it's like you can't even see half the detail of your building. So you gotta go back and make sure you at least give it some sort of recess. It doesn't have to be a lot, um, but let's say like I wanted to add another one of these. If we can get in here, and turn this off because maybe that will help this guy speed up. So if I wanted to grab that line, it doesn't go to the edge, so I'm going to make a new one. I need to at least give this something. Here's a cool trick. Sometimes it's hard to do like a tiny distance, but you can do any distance in SketchUp. And as long as you don't click anything, now you can put what you actually wanted. So I can put like half an inch and it will move it there. Same thing is true, like pushing and pulling. But see in Enscape, there's nothing. And then now I can go like half an inch back and now you do see it. So that's something to keep in mind that if you want little details like that, you at least need to have them somehow modeled, not just a line. You can later export the line work, but if it was like an animation where it needs to move through and everything, you'll need to go back and put those little things in there. Or like mullions in glass, you can't just have lines on your glass because it won't see them. So let's go back to here, and then we'll go here. So I don't want that many lines to be that heavy. So this is really like, and then you can play with this setting, and then the next one, and then that can take your rendering from looking super realistic or looking super diagrammatic or super styled to one way or another. And there's a, you can totally change what it looks like. So if we just go white, it's going to render everything white like this. And then now we could go like that and it could look like really sketchy. Or you can make it like, you can play with these different settings. And then I think this one has like some sort of weird effect to it. Um, and then... Light view shows you kind of like how much light is hitting everything. So I guess if you wanted to do like a thermal analysis, you could show that changing throughout the day. Um, I'm going to leave it on none for now. 
if you do architectural two-point perspective, um, that will actually correct your verticals always. But you end up with this weird kind of effect. So you want to be careful with that. Depth of field will like blur out like the background to make it look like you have like a wide aperture on your lens. Um, and then you can set like the focal point distance so that it's like always in focus or tell it autofocus and then I guess it just kind of tries to guess. Um, so you could use that if you want. I don't really use that. Um, that's usually more useful for like a still image, I guess, or if you wanted that kind of effect. If you didn't want like a ton of background like to go off for forever. Um, and then these guys are important because this is what changes um, like what it, what's actually balanced in as far as the exposure because if you don't have auto exposure you'll see it'll be completely blown out in some areas and other areas are just going to render black so auto exposure at least for exteriors is pretty good once you go to interior sometimes you need to change that setting and do it on your own because it, it, it struggles a little bit more with that but and then you can you can leave it auto or you can come in here and then like try and balance it yourself um, so if you want to have total master control go to the manual mode if not just go auto and then I don't think this really does anything if you have it set to auto because it's going to always prioritize whatever Enscape thinks is good field of view is just like what you th would think it is in SketchUp so here you have field of view which will make your field of view like wider or smaller right so right now here this is 35 we could put 55 and see it's going to make it look like that you can do this like get it all crazy um, I don't recommend going much over 60 really because then it starts getting super wonky um, default I think in SketchUp is 35 but you can look here and see that this doesn't necessarily have to match what is in SketchUp um, I think right now it is because we have it set to that but once we do this we can then make it look like it's more like a telephoto lens more like flattened or more like a wide angle lens by going like so if you have like a really tight interior space you may need a wider angle whereas sometimes you need you can't get really close without seeing the whole building so um, and then motion blur I don't really like it but it can add like realism it's basically like see like when you move around it adds like this effect of like motion um, I think it's it'll probably give your people that you watch it motion sickness more than anything else um, and then this is really important um, this determines how crisp and how many passes Enscape will do on the rendering so if you set this to like ultra quality it will look really good but it will be really slow and then I mean unless you have a really fast graphics card then you can try it out and see I and mean, if it's a really simple model if you have a really complicated model, even with a fast computer, you might need to use a lower setting. And then right now it's set to automatic resolution, but you can change that. And then there's another um, setting we can we'll look at a little bit later. Um, another thing to remember is these don't let you save them. So unless like they keep updating Enscape and adding more features, so I'm pretty sure that will get added pretty soon. But you can save the settings as a preset. So if you go here, see it saved it as custom setting, and then you can change the name. But it doesn't really let you export this. And then, so you can save a, like a default and call it like exterior animation or interior renderings or um, nighttime like still images and nighttime animation. And, or maybe you have one that's like option one settings. But it doesn't let you take that to another computer. So you got to always kind of remember what you had set in all of them. Um, 